All right, we are back here at Impact. We have round three of tonight's modern FNM. We got Dev Dakota on Boros Convoke and Joe on Boros Burn. So I think this one, <laughs> I think this one might go a little bit quicker than round two. It's just a hunch, though. It's just a hunch. But, uh, yeah, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us here at Impact Gaming Center in the fabulous Fairview Heights, Illinois. We are 15 minutes from downtown St. Louis. So if you're in the area, come on up. It's only 930. We're open till midnight. We'd love to see you playing some. Oh, no. Looks like Joe is going down to five. Yeah, we'd like to see you come hang out, play some magic. Uh, and if you're not in the area, thanks for watching live here on twitch.tv slash Impact Gaming Center. And if you are watching on YouTube after the fact, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss out on the action. We stream every single Friday night at 7 p.m. Central. All of our modern terms, we have a RCQ coming up on June 8th. We will be streaming that as well, so you don't want to miss out. If you're watching live, make sure to mark your calendars for that one. But this one should be a pretty quick one. We got Joe on burn and Dakota on convoke. Like I said, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a quick one. I can uh, almost guarantee it. All right, we're good to go. Joe's looking over at the door where I'm at, and I told him if you don't see me, just start. So here's a Thraben inspector. He's gonna get. Get a clue. Generate a clue token. Yeah, thanks everybody for hanging out. We've had an amazing night here already at Impact Gaming Center. We've seen a ton of awesome Magic the Gathering being played already. We wanted to get some other folks on camera that haven't been on camera, get the community involved a little bit more, which is why we've got uh, Joe and Dakota usually... You know, we try to keep the folks that are undefeated on, but we're going to switch it up. Joe rocking that really sick. And I, I complimented him already, and I'm pretty sure he's going to watch this after the fact. Pretty sick uh, Final Fantasy Rebirth hat, that trucker hat. It's pretty sick. So we have Gleeful Demolition here. You got to make some tokens. And then a Convoke. The big old Loxodon. I'm going to put plus one counters on all the duders. So Dakota doing exactly what Dakota wants to do. Bolt going to come off suspend and bolt your face down to 17. Go Or 15, rather, goes Dakota. Ah, yeah, he's been, he's been hurting himself off that canopy land. There's a... Woody footy, Woody Footland inbound, Woody Foothills inbound. Down to 12 goes Dakota. We have ourselves a race, folks. So how much are we attacking for? I'm going to let him do math. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. <laughs> Let's recount it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I don't know what this card is up top. Oh my gosh. Joe's at one. What? What card is that? I'm going to have to go out there after game one. Yeah. Joe's going to pack it up. That's going to be a quick one. Game number one goes to Dakota. That was fast. Blistering. I told you. I wasn't lying. I'm going to go check and see what the heck card that was real quick.
Alrighty, it was Force of Virtue. That is the white force from Modern Horizons 1 that gives plus one, plus one count, or uh, it's not plus one, plus one counters. It gives, it's a anthem effect. But yeah, holy smokes. That was so fast. That's why he exiled the inspector there. So, yeah. I wasn't lying to y'all. I knew this one was going to be fast, whichever way it broke. Happy Face Mesa says, let's go to Dakota. That's my friend. So we have, we have some fans for Dakota in chat. Let me know, folks, who are you all rooting for? You want Burn or Convoke? If you don't know the competitors personally, you might have a, you know, have a deck that you want to see win. Battlecad says, my spouse, Dakota. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I guess you'd be rooting for your spouse. That makes sense. <laughs> Uh-oh. Did Dakota not draw any lands? Looks like Joe's mulliganing. Anyway, quickest mulligan I've ever seen Joe do. Both players down to six, so at least we're on level playing field thus far. Get some hype in chat. Woo woo, that's right. <laughs> All righty, here we go. Down to six, both players go. Can they read? Uh, no. So that used to actually be a rule. Uh, if you could prove, you basically show your hand, you prove to your opponent you don't have any lands, and you get to redraw seven. That's no longer the rule. It's just you got a mulligan. Joe going to keep six, going to put one back. Regardless, though, you, to clarify, you do draw seven. You just have to put back cards equal to the amount of times that you've mulliganed. So if you've mulliganed two times, as Dakota's about to do, if he likes his hand here, he will have to put back two cards. So, the London Mulligan is what it's called. It's a really good mulligan rule, I think. I think more games should adopt it. Oh, wow. Well, he's got a one-lander. He's got Memnites, Giver of Runes. Uh, three Memnites. Oh, wow, did he... Are these the cards he's keeping? Yeah, he's got to be the cards he's keeping. So he's going to put back Aired Mesa and Memnite? Makes sense, I suppose. So many Memnites. So yeah, put back Memnites in an Aaron Mesa. And Joe's going to lead us off, Inspiring Vantage, into Goblin Guide. Attack you, trigger. That's not a land. Dakota will drop to 18. Aaron Mesa. Gonna drop Dakota down to 17. And he will fetch shock, which takes him to 15. The two off of the shock land entering the battlefield. We'll see which shock land it is. Of course, it is Sacred Foundry. Almost forgot the name of the card. All righty. And here is Novice Inspector. That'll make a clue token. Memnite. 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 <laughs> Joe cracks a smile. Back to Joe. So now Joe really doesn't have a good attack. 
because Dakota would be able to double block if he chooses, or just single block and soak up some damage. There's Mentor, and there's Mentor number two. Yeah, we're getting in there. We didn't play Burn not to turn dude sideways. Venerator locks it on the reveal. Let's see how Dakota wants to deal with these blocks, if at all. This is currently four damage coming across. So looks like he'll just take it and drop to 11, although the players haven't shown that. And it locks it on. I'm going to come down, put plus one counters on all these little critters. And is a 4-4 himself, so he is a big old blocker. So if Joe wants to attack past this, he's going to have to get pretty tricky. He does have a Searing Blaze in hand, though, so that's good. Sacred Foundry comes in on tap, so Joe drops to 18. Searing Blaze, target your Loxodon, which is going to trigger Prowess for these Monastery Mentors. And he's going to finish it off. Lava Spike. Oh, maybe not. So uh, he's putting Dakota in a position here to where he's going to make him not want to block. He'll attack these Swift Spears are three power creatures right now, three twos. And we will move to game number three. Joe taking down game two here. So we have what I like to call the best two words in competitive magic if you're broadcasting it. Game number, well, best two words, I guess. Game three. <laughs> but here we go. Both players just going to... Stick to their guns here. No sideboard shenanigans. No faking out the opponent. Just going to keep the same configuration of decks. But yeah, thanks everybody for hanging out with us tonight. If you're watching live on Twitch, we do appreciate you. Shout out to Birdman for the seven gifted subs. That was awesome. Shout out to everyone else who subscribed independently, um, including Birdman. He, he, he subscribed himself as well. So, <laughs> um, And if you're watching after the fact on YouTube, you know we stream every single Friday at 7 p.m. It's a modern we do have a RCQ coming up, a regional championship qualifier. It's going to be Pioneer. We are going to stream that. So if you are on Twitter, or Twitter, if you're on Twitch that day, feel free. Come hang out. Watch some live Magic the Gathering content. And uh, hang out with me. I'll be commentating all day. It's going to be a long day. It's going to be a fun day, though. A lot of high-powered uh, high Magic. A lot of... Uh, experienced players i know several people several regulars that are going to be playing even some that are playing here tonight trying to get on that pro tour train both players drawing seven cards uh dakota on a mulligan i suppose i didn't see that but uh he will get us started here with an arid mesa so crack that air Mesa drop to 19. Or probably go to 17, I would imagine. Yeah. And we will likely have a creature inbound. Novice Inspector, going to trigger a clue. Mimnite, Mimnite, go. Joe going to draw. I think he drew a Searing Blaze. Going to play 
But Sunbait Canyon, I believe, is the name of that card. And we're going to attack. So, show it 17. 17 all. Joe drew a mountain, I believe. And here comes Eidolon of the Great Revel. We're gonna crack a clue, draw a card. Kaldotha Rebirth, the pickup for Dakota. That is Gleeful Demolition, essentially, except it can only target your artifacts. Effectively, though, the same thing. He can attack here and cast that. He does have a Bushwhacker, so he could kick this Bushwhacker. Give all his creatures haste. And plus one, plus zero. So Dakota's got some options here, but first he's going to crack his fetch land, go to 16 for the time being. Grab a mountain, so stay at 16. This feels like a Bushwhacker kicked. he wouldn't need to do this if he were casting Kaldotha Rebirth. He wouldn't need to crack the fetch land. Oh, or maybe both. Maybe both. Just a, just a pass back. Okay, doesn't want to lose the life. And that's another Eidolon of the Great Revel. Okay. Joe might be cooking here. Plays Bluntstay Meyer. All right, that's good. Searing Blaze. Trigger. So Joe's going to drop to 15 on his own Eidolon trigger. I take the uh, Inspector Gadget down, or the Inspector Novice. Dakota drops to 13, thanks to the creature dying. And then Reveler going to get in there for two. Drop Dakota down to 11. Pass back. Dakota takes a draw step. He drew... I don't know what the name of that card is. If he plays it, we'll zoom in. For sure. We're, we're, we're zooming here if he plays this. I think it's two mana, so he will take two damage off of the Eidolon trigger. Joe's got his pin ready. He's going to take a point off of the Sunbaked Canyon as well, so that'll drop him to 10. And then 8 off of the trigger from... Case of the Gateway Express. There's Bushwhacker kicked. Case, case of the Gateway Express, when it enters the battlefield, choose target creature you don't control. Each creature you don't control deals one damage. Each creature you control deals one damage to that creature. And then to solve, three or more creatures attack this turn. And then solved, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. To solve this, you have to be on the following turn. Or it solves at the end of the turn. So that's one way to get rid of an Eidolon. <laughs> so... Down to seven goes Joe. Something got rid of that case. Did I miss something? Chat, did I miss something? I think I had to have. I think I had to have while I was reading the case. While I was reading what the case did, we lost what happened to the case. It's a curious case. End of the turn. Searing Blaze, your Bushwhacker. So that'll deal three damage. Down to five. Joe at seven. Not a lot, but 
Certainly not a little, and this is good for Joe. Him, Dakota cracking the canyon is, is certainly a good sign. We've got Bushwhacker and Kadotha Rebirth. If he kicks the Bushwhacker here, that'll be 2-4-6, taking him to 1. But can, oh, well, Joe wouldn't be able to activate his Sunbait Canyon. Ooh, Dakota dropping to 4. That's dangerous because... Boros Charm gets him here. Although if he can take him to one, Joe won't be able to activate that Sunbait Canyon. So we're just going to play it safe here. Kaldotha... Oh, he's going to Kaldotha Rebirth. Okay, so the game, I believe, is over. We just don't know it yet. Because this is going to create three goblins. And then we're going to kick the Bushwhacker and attack for two, four, six, eight, ten. Holy smokes, yep, and there's a handshake. Always the good sport, Joe. Dakota, however, going to take this one down. Wear tear. Oh, thank you, Grat. Wear tear took down the case. But that'll do it here for round three. Dakota on Convoke taking down Joe on Burn. Uh, I told you it was going to be fast. <laughs> I told you this round was going to be a quick one. Congrats, Dakota. He'll move on to 2-1, and one, and Joe dropping to 0-3. Oh um, yeah, and we got Hado Cod. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, in chat, saying woo. Yay, Dakota. So, shout out, Dakota. You got some fans in chat if you're watching this after the fact. But thanks, everybody, for watching. We're not quite done yet. I will let you know if there has been a pair down or anything like that. And if there has been a pair down, that will be the end of tonight's broadcast. But otherwise, stay tuned, because we may be looking at another round of Modern here at Impact. I'm Les Alex. You can follow me on the internet. I make YouTube videos and stream occasionally. So go check me out. I make Magic the Gathering content, and I'm on Twitter. Otherwise, though, follow Impact Gaming Center on all of our social media channels. We've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. We appreciate you. We will see you on the other side of this little stream bump, this little ad break for round four here at Impact Gaming Center.